hills were once the northern edge of the known world. Beyond lay an empty, frozen wasteland stretching all the way to the Arctic. This was as close to the ice as people dared go. A hunting party is in the area, trying to find food for their families. They've come this far north in search of reindeer, the best source of protein in a frozen climate. They've been successfully hunting in this territory for generations, but this year is different. The big herds haven't shown. Still, a single reindeer could feed them for a week. They don't understand why, but each year the weather is getting worse and the search for food becomes more desperate. Divi. Gibby and the king had borrowed. Their families are back at camp, 20 miles further south. In evolutionary terms, these are modern humans. They can make clothes and shelters tough enough to withstand glacial temperatures. And like us, they speak a complex language, but their lifestyle is very different. They live in small clans of around 30 people, taking from the land what they need to survive. For the last five years, this clan has been led by its chief, Bran. He owes his status to his physical prowess. He is the strongest member of the group. The hunters return, their sleds almost empty. It's only October, but it's already winter. Without reindeer meat, the clan will struggle to survive the months ahead. Enga Gordiad, Burud Gordiad! Enga Lo, Dizotchu, Dizotchu, Enga Dasalantad Valizi! They could abandon camp now and travel south in search of food. But to Bron, this seems a drastic move. Enga Pirvgen! Heading into the unknown, just as winter is closing in. He decides they'll stay put and trust in the spirits to protect them. His faith is misplaced. The climate was being determined by physical forces beyond their control. Forces which had been unleashed way back in time, long before humans had ever set foot on the planet. Three million years previously, on the other side of the world, the shifting of continental plates created the Isthmus of Panama. Ocean currents could no longer flow between the Atlantic and Pacific. Warm tropical water was diverted north at the time, there was no ice at the North Pole. It was cold enough, but the air was too dry for snow to fall. But when warm, wet air from the tropics reached the Arctic, clouds started to form. Snow fell, and an ice sheet began to grow. None of this would have mattered to humans if the ice had stayed restricted to the North Pole. 
but it didn't. The Earth's orbit isn't stable. Over thousands of years, tiny wobbles change the amount of sunlight reaching the planet's surface. These wobbles made the northern ice sheets first grow and then melt back again. Since the Ice Age began two and a half million years ago, they have pulsed back and forth over 30 times. Twenty-four thousand years ago, the ice was advancing toward one of its high points, moving south into Europe at up to 60 feet a week. In the hills of southeast England, they're unaware of the ice sheets to the north. But as the temperature drops to 20 below, it becomes clear. Braun's decision to stay was a mistake. When it's this cold, they should be eating 3,500 calories a day. They simply don't have the stockpiles of food. The stream, normally full of fish, has frozen solid. They are so desperate that two men are sent out on a hunting mission in the middle of a snowstorm. Bran knows they are unlikely to return. By January, frostbite and hypothermia are taking their toll. People are starting to die. The dead can't be buried. The ground is too hard to dig a grave. February, the last of the children dies. His mother, Mara, can only grieve. Without children, the clan has no future. The people of Northern Europe are being wiped out by the climate. Twenty-four thousand years ago, humans were trying to avoid the same fate as the Welsh rhinos. One of the hunters, Aki, and his woman, Mara, are leaving. The rest of their family is dead, including their own son. The only other member of the clan to survive is the chief, Bran. It was his decision to stay that's cost so many lives. Bran, give him gun. They have no choice but to move on, because just the three of them can't hunt large animals. While the weather is relatively mild, they can live off smaller prey, berries and roots. But when next winter comes, they won't survive if they're still alone. Aki, Mara, and Bran are trying to reach their nearest neighbors, a clan they meet up with from time to time and have even exchanged members with in the past. Their camp is a hundred miles further east, 
but progress is painfully slow. Although it's March and the worst of the winter is over, snow is on the ground for at least seven months a year. They've walked for a week, only to find a deserted camp. Now they are truly alone. There's no point in turning back. They can only go on into unknown territory with one aim, survival. They're heading south into a large valley, a valley that today is underwater at the bottom of the North Sea. 24,000 years ago, so much of the planet's water was trapped in the ice sheets that sea levels were 350 feet lower than today. The travelers are able to walk from Britain all the way to mainland Europe. Aki, Mara, and Bran understand enough about navigation to head away from the ice and in the general direction of the midday sun. But each day they need food and water. It makes sense to stay with the river, even if it takes them off course. Mara and Aki believe that Bron has forfeited his right to act as their leader. His physical strength now seems irrelevant. Their chances of survival will depend less on brute force and more on intelligence. The human brain has always been the key to the success of our species. It evolved in response to two and a half million years of an ice age climate. Compared to other creatures, humans have an enormous brain. It uses up 20% of all our energy, seven times more than the brains of most mammals but it is this big brain that allows us to survive in the most extreme conditions. Bron is able to turn a few twigs and sinew into an impromptu trap. And in spite of the weather, Aki can use two pieces of wood to make a fire. With night on the way, a fire is essential, not just for keeping them warm, it's also their best protection against predators. Despite the cold, Europe at the time was home to packs of hyenas and even lions. <laughs> This time, they drive off the danger. But as long as the three of them are alone, they remain vulnerable.
Aki, Mara, and Bran are coping well in unfamiliar territory. Their intelligence allows them to find ways to continue their regular routines. Aki has made a flint sharp enough to use as a razor. A beard can be a liability in a cold climate. It retains moisture and can freeze up when temperatures drop too low. Breakfast comes courtesy of Bronze trapping skills. Hairs were common throughout Ice Age Europe. Because there's water, shelter, and plenty of food, it's tempting to break their journey and stay here for a few days. But if they're ever going to make contact with other people, they need to keep moving. In Europe 24,000 years ago, there were a hundred square miles of land for every human being. Now that signs of spring have arrived, the travelers have the best chance of finding others. They've covered 600 miles since they left England and have reached the northern plains of Germany. It's May and temperatures are finally creeping up above freezing. As the snow melts, the rivers become swollen. Mara, Aki, and Bran aren't used to water running this fast. But they're using their intelligence creatively and turning the river to their advantage. They've never made a raft before, but they've seen wood float, and as a hunter, Aki has made timber sleds strong enough to carry reindeer carcasses. They're taking a big risk. If the raft capsizes, they'll drown. Any river or lake they've known has always been too cold for them to learn to swim. But the risk is worth taking. The river will carry them downstream much faster than they can ever walk. This is the real value of human intelligence. Our ability to cope with unfamiliar situations and invent new solutions. Dealing with change has become a way of life for our species because we evolved in such a volatile climate. Aki, Mara and Bran have been traveling through Europe for over two months and are now in southern Germany. All that time, they've been looking for other people. Sky. Sky, 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 sky. Now, their search is over. They're no longer alone. But having come this far, Bran is uncertain. It's always risky making contact with strangers. Aki believes they have no choice. By offering gifts, they'll show they mean no harm. In 
Ice Age Europe, a meeting between strangers would have been incredibly rare. Vem! Eredito! Tutskini. Kvi hitte, kvi go! Tutskini. They'll have to overcome a language barrier. Vungod! Vungod berna! Vigin genidi! Enga go asanj genidi! Idi vergo dochu dungun gengian! Kvi nikiniti! Yelvan! Hidi zunz livyad! Hidi! Nashkum. Nashkum. Their gifts serve their purpose. But Mara, a healthy woman of childbearing age, is of greater interest. In Ice Age Europe, women were valued far more than men, as the travelers will soon find out. This is no ordinary camp. It's what archaeologists call an aggregation, a temporary meeting of local clans. Such meetings were common in Ice Age Europe, increasingly so as the climate worsened. Each clan sends a few members who spend several weeks together, sharing ideas, skills and artifacts, anything which can help in the struggle for survival. The aggregation serves the same purpose as a modern trade convention, a showcase for the latest innovations. Making jewelry may seem trivial, but gifts and trinkets were important currency for creating ties between people. In an uncertain world, it's always useful to get along with your neighbors. Bron and Aki have befriended some of the men of the aggregation. They're being shown a new way of throwing spears using a wooden launcher. Being sociable has always been fundamental to human survival. It was hardwired into the brain during the course of our evolution. In Ice Age Europe, being sociable isn't a choice, it's a necessity. Individuals have no long-term future. They have to become part of a group. Mara and the others are trying to charm their hosts. The aggregation will be ending soon, and they want to be adopted permanently by one of the groups. The weather is good and food plentiful. The visitors are welcome. But with the prospect of another bad winter ahead, none of the clans will find it easy to absorb three new members. The only person with any long-term value to them is Mara. Yada! 
The chief wants her to join him and become his woman. Mara knows she'd gain from this arrangement, but without her, Aki and Bran would find it even harder to be accepted by any other clan. Mara has made her choice. The travelers have no future here. This god, this is god. Aki, Bron, and Mara are leaving before dawn, stealing as much food as they can carry. Once again, they're having to journey into the unknown. They're heading south again and climbing back above the snow line. It's only August, but already the temperature is dropping. For the second year in a row, winter is coming early. The climate has taken a very definite downturn. Human life was as unstable as the climate. With the temperatures dropping fast, Bran, Mara, and Aki will only survive another couple of months unless they can find people who are willing to share resources with them. At the aggregation, they heard talk of a land three weeks away with great forests and plenty of food. A land we know as Italy. But to get there, they'll have to cross the Alps. At this time, the glaciers of the Alps covered 50,000 square miles, over 40 times their size today. For Mara, Aki, and Bran, their entire lives have been a struggle for survival against the destructive power of ice. But they've never seen that power for themselves until now. For the first time, they have come face to face with an ice sheet. And Gongi Kum. They're looking for a pass that skirts the mountains. But the glaciers move so fast, the landscape is constantly being redrawn, and passes disappear.
people of Ice Age Europe were biologically equipped to survive the demands of almost every climate, and yet this wasn't enough. If they were to avoid extinction, our ancestors would have to abandon their hunter-gatherer lifestyle and create a more advanced society than had ever existed before. Bran, Mara, and Aki have been traveling for four months. Their journey south has been blocked by the ice of the Alps. Now they're heading east into modern-day Austria. Europe at the time was so barren and empty that there were fewer humans than there are chimps or gorillas today, species we regard as endangered. Population level so low, each new life is highly valued. Mara is two months pregnant. The news is welcomed by Braun and Aki, the child's father. Vegan Skyman. Engas Wingut. But traveling with a pregnant woman is going to make their journey even more difficult. They urgently need to find other people. Their experience of the aggregation has taught them not to expect too much from strangers. As the climate's gotten worse, clans have become more insular. Bands of hunters are competing for the same resources, jealously guarding what little they have. Sage Europe, people knew no other way to live than this. For hunter-gatherers, territory was everything. In Ice Age Europe, there were resources available, but they were beyond the grasp of hunter-gatherers. Aki, Bran, and Mara have heard stories of mammoths, but they've never seen one before. They were rare in the northern hills. Archaeologists believe that mammoths were too dangerous for our ancestors to hunt. Instead, they'd have scavenged the carcasses of any that died naturally. The travelers can do nothing but walk by a wonderful source of food. Aki, Mara, and Bran have eaten barely anything in the last week. They're facing starvation. But when they do find food, they need to be careful. In their own land, they knew what to eat and what to avoid. Here, the tasting of an unfamiliar mushroom is an act of faith. They should try just a small piece and wait to see their reaction to it. But Aki's hunger overrides his sense of caution. 
Gakum! Since leaving their camp, the three travelers have covered over a thousand miles and reached the modern day Czech Republic. But they won't be able to go much further. The mushrooms have given Aki food poisoning. Mara is powerless to help him. out of options. They're exhausted, lost and alone. Or so they think. For several hours, a hunting party has been tracking them, keeping their distance. But now, they're taking advantage of Aki's sickness to move in. Hey, go, go. The three travelers are being taken away. They don't know where or why. They have little option but to give in to their captors and await their fate. are being taken to a camp. But it's unlike any camp they've ever known. They are used to temporary sites of three or four teepees. By comparison, this is a city. Three travelers have been brought to a valley in Moravia in Central Europe, to the first permanent settlement in human history. Today, the same wide valley betrays no sign of its past. Vineyards have been planted here at Dolny Vestonica and at Pavlov, two of the most important Ice Age settlements in Europe. They were first discovered in the 1920s, but their significance has only recently been appreciated. What's important about these Moravian sites, what makes them far more than just another site, is that they give us very early signs of people settling permanently. These uh, places were settlements. They weren't just temporary camps used once and then people were off and never to return. We have some evidence that uh, mammoth bones were actually stuck together with wet clay, which may suggest the kind of, that they were kind of bricks, if you want, for, for the people of the time. So the people were building something 
they're in, that they wanted to come back to. This was an investment they were making in the same way that a homeowner today invests in what they consider to be their permanent home. There's also evidence of hearths and, and the fact that people were reusing hearths in the same area. And this was not just uh, a group of fly-by-nights, they were digging in. Other finds at Dolne Vestonice have confirmed the existence of a society more advanced than any other at the time. What has been found in the Moravian sites is the earliest evidence from anywhere in the world for uh, ceramic technology. Not in the form of pottery, but in the form of art, uh, making figurines that have been fired. And this suggests that people had time. Because if you're traveling less, then you have more time to develop and refine your artistic systems. Some people even describe Donna Vestanetza as the New York of the Ice Age, simply because it's the cutting edge of settled life at the time. Sicidian. Bran has been brought before the chief and elders of the community. Merg. In his clan, Merg he was a chief himself. Here, he's just a refugee asking for help. Clarian. There's no reason to expect any better treatment from these people than from the clans of the aggregation or the hunters who chase the travelers off their territory. And without a common language, it's almost impossible for Braun to argue why he and the others should be allowed to stay. But there's something different about this community, as Mara and Aki are finding out. Aki has been delivered into the care of the medicine woman. She's also the spiritual leader of the community. She's going to such lengths to help a stranger because these are people with a totally new approach to outsiders. Facing a hostile climate, they believe their chances of survival are improved by increasing numbers, not restricting them. The size of the community varies throughout the year, but at peak times there are over a hundred people living here, well beyond the normal limit of 30 for a hunter-gatherer group. Strangers are seen as a potential asset rather than a threat. Aki has recovered. He and Braun are learning that this settlement isn't just larger than anything they've known before. There's also something different about the way the people here organize their work. In Aki and Braun's hunter-gatherer clan, everyone had a hand in almost every activity. Here, people seem to have been allocated specific tasks. As different tasks are divided up among different people, experts have emerged, individuals with specific skills. They have become much more efficient at what they do, 
Each year, they are able to make improvements. Tools get sharper, clothes warmer, and huts stronger. They can cope with the deteriorating climate and grow in numbers. And a culture of specialists has started to take root. Aki and Braun have no specialist skills to offer to this community. They've been assigned to a production line, systematically scavenging a mammoth which has died near the settlement. The hide will be used for warmth, the bones for building, and the flesh for meat. In time, Aki and Braun will be expected to learn a craft, but for now, they're fit only for general laboring work. While the men are scavenging, Mara is out hunting. Although she's pregnant, she's still expected to work as a beater flushing out animals. of prehistoric man, the great hunter, is misleading. Once our ancestors began hunting with nets, women were just as likely to be the providers of meat as men. But women could only go hunting if others looked after their children. Archaeologists call this the grandparent revolution. Any community looking to increase the efficiency of its workforce needs to have specialists caring for its children. Aki and Braun have spent their adult years providing for their women and children. Now, the women are providing for them. Mara is finding it much easier to adjust. Nefni. Vigan Zamuj, or call before Jan. If they're going to stay in this settlement, they'll all have to come to terms with this new way of life. The first storm of the winter has arrived in Moravia. It's only October but it's already 20 below. Hunting's impossible in these conditions, so the community draws on its stockpiles of food. They have freezer pits full of meat, which was stored earlier in the year. But good planning doesn't solve all their problems. People are being forced to spend long periods of time in confined spaces. Inevitably, tensions surface. 
Enter Akron to ping it con to con. I ping to fun. Kiliti. Ving in anger. Zunitan ziking then. Even though there's enough food to go around, there's still resentment of Bron and Aki, unskilled outsiders enjoying the fruits of the community's labors. Large societies need ways of diffusing tension. Anthropologists believe that that's the function of a ritual, to remind people of their shared beliefs. Within this community, every adult's face is tattooed. The markings are a permanent badge of identity. If the newcomers want to be accepted as equals, they'll also need tattoos. These aren't the first people to decorate their bodies, but what's unusual is the way it's become part of a ceremony. A ceremony which gives them a sense of all belonging to something that stretches beyond their physical world. and Aki have both allowed themselves to be tattooed. They can see a future for themselves and their unborn child in this community. But Braun was once a chief, admired for his strength. He can't bring himself to become just a small part of this large community. He's already thinking the unthinkable, moving on again after the winter. While the ritual is taking place, the food supplies of the camp have been left unattended. Now they are being raided. The attackers are the same hunters who chased away Bran, Aki, and Mara two months previously. Unable to stockpile enough food for themselves, they have resorted to stealing from others. Is the alarm. But it's Aki who goes to the defense of his new community. The raiders have been driven off, but at great cost. Aki has been badly injured and is bleeding heavily. Although Aki had only just been initiated into the community, he died in its name and is honored accordingly. Dig it, Ved. So catch. Tunde 
Once again, a ritual serves to bring the community together. But this time, Bran is among them. He's abandoned all thoughts of leaving and has had himself tattooed. accepts that his future lies here with this new community and its new values. Four months later, Mara goes into labor. It's been a year since she and the others set out across Europe. A year in which she has completely changed her way of life and become part of a settled, permanent community. Her son won't have to make the same transition. He'll grow up knowing no other way of life. The world started getting warmer about 20,000 years ago. The Earth's orbit took one of its periodic wobbles and we moved a little closer to the sun, enough for temperatures to increase and the ice sheets to start melting back to the poles. They left behind vast tracts of fertile land, ripe for human colonization. The legacy of our Ice Age ancestors is all around us. Physically, our world has changed beyond recognition. But fundamentally, we are still the same people. 24,000 years ago might seem like the dim and distant past, but in reality, it is no more than a thousand generations. Recently, geneticists have shown that nearly two-thirds of America's diverse population can directly trace their descent to people living at the height of the last glaciation in Europe. The last 10,000 years have been one of the warmest and most stable periods in our planet's history. And in that time, human civilization has flourished. We've built a highly specialized, urbanized world. But one day, all of this will change. One day, the ice will return. And yet somewhere, hardwired into each one of us, is the experience of Ice Age survival. <laughs>